this episode with Peter Sim. We will be talking about direct bookings versus OTAs. Obviously, we come from the um, Airbnb, Booking.com, Expedia, VRBO space. Uh, and that's those are our main OTAs, kind of almost worldwide. Uh, tours activities will be a bit different, but I'd love to have your thoughts on what's going on and, and sure, what the opportunities are. I have are a slight reputation of being anti OTA from talking around the world and stuff, and it's mainly because I've pinned some of their business models as not being great business models for destinations, being extractive rather than adding value. But I don't disagree with OTAs, I actually think they are a great model. And from an operator, and, and, I, and I advise some small OTAs, so I'm, I'm an advisor to OTAs, so I'm not anti OTA by any means. However, as a business owner, you have to get the balance of OTA business or an indirect business, let's call it indirect business, because it can be coming from a, a whole host of places as well as OTAs, and your direct business. Now, I know obviously on accommodation, the amount of OTA-driven business is ginormous compared with tours and activities, and tours and activities is less than 10% coming from OTAs, whereas in, front, in accommodation, it's ginormous. However, if you drill into accommodation, it isn't that ginormous in the big brands. When you get into Hilton, Marriott, the major global hotel chains, they've won back from the OTAs. They're up at 60, 70, 70 odd percent direct and then choosing where they put it through because they, they did go down the rabbit hole. They found the rabbit hole wasn't very nice when they got to the end of it, so they pulled back and invested billions to get their customers back and take ownership of the customers and reward them. And obviously for them, that has great benefits because they have a whole chain around the world. So the customer goes from one Marriott to the other market, to the other market. But then when you drill into the data of the small hotels around the world, it's not nice data <laughs> that the OTAs are basically driving all the bookings and the big percentage, and I can't mind the exact percentage, but it's high, really high percentage that, that's driving in, into them. Mm. Now, why is that not good? One, you're not in control of your business. It's simple as that. If you're not generating your own customers and someone's generating the customers from you, as you found out in the pandemic, when everything goes pear-shaped, it becomes very messy because you're not in control of your business. It makes it really difficult for you to rebuild your business when things start to build again because you may not have the database, you've not got the relationships with the customer because they've got the relationships with the OTA. So there's a resilience thing about your business and a longevity thing about the business that people didn't really pay attention to uh, pre-pandemic. I'm sure they're paying attention to that now. Customers are like oxygen to a business. If you have a customer base, you have more resilience in your business. Other people have the customer base who are lending them to you. You don't really have res resilience in your business. So and I'm not going to say what the right mix of OTA to direct is, because I believe every business is different and you have to go through quite a long workflow to come out with what is the ideal uh, resilience for your business, also the ideal profit mix for your business. The other challenge you have in accommodation is in tours and activities, we can price up to deal with OTAs because they don't dominate the market. So if people want to sell by OTAs, they can price up in them because the comparison isn't too brutal in tours and activities. If you price up an accommodation and on booking.com or expedia.com and you're a three star city center hotel, there's another 50, another 100, another 150 three star hotels. And the unfortunate truth is in the hotel industry, beds have become a bit of a commodity. Therefore, if the price point is really important. And in other activities, it's not as important, but the price point in the beds is really important when you're on a, an aggregator system. But you can't just stick another $30 or another $40 on your bed to take care of the, uh, the OTA price because you may not get the bookings. So it's a, it's a much more difficult space. But then that comes back to the point you're losing at the booking point, you really have to make the value back when you get the customer in your your hotel. Because again, that's when you have an advantage over the hotel, over the OTA. You have the customer in your hotel. There's good news about the pandemic. If there is good news about the pandemic, that's, that's not, a, not much good news about the pandemic. But a little bit is we are seeing data of people going back to booking direct. So the swing from OTAs has slowed going back to the new, every other disaster pre-pandemic we had in travel, the OTAs won. They kept, they left the disaster with a bigger market share. This time they haven't yet. That may change. So you've got to ask why. 
and this is only my opinion, the bookings went local. You don't need OTAs for local. So the more localised the bookings were, the more people felt confident to go direct, therefore the OTAs missed out. And, and that, happened on, that happened on a global basis. There's, there's a... I've got I've got one for you as well that we know from our research is that it's very difficult for people to be able to ask kind of uh, out of the box questions on an OTA. So you can't really ask about the in-depth yep. cancellation policies. You can't really ask about cleaning policies. You can't ask those specific questions. So that also uh, lends itself to that direct booking process where it's like, well, hold on, there's a lot more uncertainty. So I want to actually talk to a human being. So there's a lot more people picking up the phone or sending an email or just getting in touch to have those touch points that if something goes wrong. And I know for a fact, I was exactly had this issue where I was booking a hotel in Sydney for a conference. Uh, I needed to talk to them just to say, look, I don't know what's going to happen next week. I think I'll come. I'm booking everything, but there's a good chance that everything's going to blow up because uh, you know, they might shut the borders and lo and behold, they shut the borders and the hotel was fantastic in terms of their customer service. But had I booked through an OTA, one, they might not have cared about me because they're like, you know what? Not our problem. And two, um, uh, it might've been a lot more difficult. So that was the other reason uh, as well on top of that, the local part, but also the, um, uh, the fact that you and just that, can't get the information that is from an opportunity OTA. that's not going away anywhere quickly. So again, live example, last couple of weeks, I've been traveling to different right. countries. Getting in and out of each country at the moment is a mission. From a paperwork point of view, from a regulation point of view, from all the stuff you've got to go through, and it's different from each country depending on where you come from. Therefore, to me, that is a huge opportunity for hotels to be able to understand that, and it does take a bit of research from the staff to understand it. But if you can understand as the hotel owner and the hotel staff the pain that the customers are going through to get into your destination, they are going to be phoning you more and you're going to be able there to reassure them and help them if you've got that knowledge base there. The OTAs are not going to be able, they may do it in a digital form and it may be buried in a frequently asked questions if you can actually find it on their site that they won't make it that relevant because they'll just focus on the booking part of it. So... That's not going to weigh in the next 12 months. It's probably not going to weigh in the next 36 months. We're in this for the long period. So that has increased. The pain of travelling has increased somewhat, and it's not going to weigh. There's a lot more regulation, a lot more stuff you have to understand, and the days of just bouncing about the world free willy, knowing the system, has gone. Every journey takes a bit more research now. To me, that is a huge opportunity for the, for the accommodation. Because the one thing the traveller needs is a bed. <laughs> so that you know, the one, they may not book the tours and activities up front, they may not book the restaurants up front, they may leave all that right to the last very minute. And the transport in the city right to the last minute, but they're gonna book the bed because they're worried about having somewhere to, to sleep. So that's, to me is, these people are having a hard time traveling at the moment. How can I position my business I know they're going to speak to me, whether it's pre, pre-booking or once they arrive, but I am going to speak to them. How can I help them with that pain that they're experiencing? And uh, so there's a couple of things that it makes me think of. One is uh, I'm very conscious that uh, Google My Business has changed uh, the way that they're doing things, and they've actually changed the name of Google My Business. I think it's Google Business Profile. And uh, one thing they will be working on is trying to facilitate communication so they can remain digital, but it's yep. as rapid as a phone call. Um, it's because there's a break there where if you if you call someone, you get through. If you send them a message, it could be an hour, two hours. It, it might be a day before you even get a response. So that's one part that they're trying to streamline. Um, to play devil's advocate, I am confident that the OTAs are going to catch up with some of these burning issues very quickly because they're going to go, hold on, we're losing market share. They're communicating directly. We need to figure out why people are communicating directly and they'll put the systems in place to stop that happening because it's in their business interest too and the, and the margins for them are enormous if they get it right. So I think that there's that. But then conversely, I think that you're right that the opportunity is now 
But I, I think that that window where you said up to 36 months, yeah, I think yeah. it will close really quickly as those OTAs figure it out and they just go, oh, you know what, we've got this because they're, they're smart enough yeah, to, I mean, to, to in, figure in that part out. Straightforward, the OTAs are going to collect more data than small operators are going to collect more rapidly. So they're getting the data going through. But it does mean they will target their efforts, their money will be in places where they know they're going to get a higher compression rate. And we're going to get a disrupted world for X number of years. And there's a huge amount of luck in this. Some destinations are going to do well. Some destinations are not going to do well just because of the pandemic situation. And the, the OTAs will obviously be targeting the ones that are doing well because they have the data showing that there's X number of flights going there, there's X hotel rooms getting booked there. And then they also have the, the advantage of collective data if it's an OTA covering all the, the sectors. So yes, I agree in the longer term, they have a distinct advantage. But at the moment, I do think operators have an advantage. One of the things that I just don't see operators doing, and it's so simple, uh, hotels, tours and activity operators, they try to tell the customer how to communicate with them. Now, today's customer, some want to communicate by phone, some by email, some by WhatsApp, some by Facebook Messenger. If the Chinese come back, some by WeChat and Google Messenger. There's six, there's more, right? So I've just had a, a, a pretty successful season with one of my businesses when we got open and we took bookings on every one of these channels. So we have channels opened up to every way the customer wants to communicate with us, we will communicate with them. Right? Because otherwise you're missing opportunity. Because some of these customers, going back to what I said earlier, psychology and inhabits, they only communicate by WeChat. That's all they do. And if you're not prepared to take WeChat, you're not getting that booking. And then some of the operators who... I do see communicating. The first thing they do, they get an inquiry, it comes in from WeChat, it comes in from Facebook Messenger, and they try to get them to fill in an email form or some sort of form or switch them to some other means. Leave the customer in the communication channel that the customer came in on because that's where they're comfortable on. They feel comfortable on there. You're going to get a quicker response from them. When you get back to them, they're going to get back to you quicker because that's what they're comfortable on. At some point in the conversation, it may make sense to jump out normally at the transaction point if you've not built the tech into the transaction. But you will increase your conversion rate if you open up your communication channels and communicate with customers on how they want to do it. And we can't dictate. And I like so I don't particularly like Google Messenger or the Google Messenger system. I don't particularly like it. I don't think it flows well, but I got a lot of customers from it. And WeChat in a pre-pandemic when I was doing a lot of work in Asia, I hated WeChat because the amount of incoming noise that came because of the way of Asian clients use WeChat was just all encompassing. It was just too much. So I don't particularly like WeChat either, but I still use it because I do a lot of business in it. So my preference isn't the relevant thing. It's the preference of the customers. Whatever communication they want to do, I'm, I'm happy to communicate with them. And that extends itself to social media as well. A lot of look at where they're hanging out and what platforms they're on, and then you can start to start to pick them up, and you can convert them and, and do what you need to do. Um, a really interesting point that you that you raise about keeping them on the platform, and each time you try to divert them from that platform or put them onto your own systems, you're very likely to break the communication and break that. I mean, how great would it be is if, if you're on Facebook, for example, and you want to book a place and it can all just happen within the chat um, and then it's just done and then, you know, you've got your booking and made. It will. And, and that will happen because it's in the interest of whoever controls the communication channels, WeChat, Facebook, Instagram, whatever the communication's on, will have booking systems in them. So in Facebook's already got various ways of doing it. It's not slick for travel, but that, that is coming, that is... That it holds people on these platforms longer, and that's what these big tech companies want to do. And then there's a transaction fee in there, even if they don't. I mean, Facebook could do this. They've got the engineers to do it. They don't need to charge a commission. They just need to charge a transaction fee, and they make X billion dollars in the first two months. And so it's this stuff is coming, but rather than waiting it coming, <laughs> get used to communicating with your customers where your customers are at the moment. And then once there's booking... In WeChat, if you talk to a Chinese guest in WeChat, they just book everything in there because it's all, it's all like the ecosystem is all yeah. in there anyway. Have you found a solution yet to uh, combining 
all the different chat channels because my understanding is that right now that is it's sort of a big battleground as to who controls the communication channels so they don't want to allow you to to kind of centralize it as as a user um have you found any workarounds yet yeah there is a couple of software platforms out there that will take all the pipes for the communication counter so it gives you one dashboard yeah uh, uh, therefore your your staff or your team or yeah. yourself is yeah. communicating on one dashboard rather than multiple channels i'm just trying to think of the name of it it's a dutch what? company is the one that's got the most traction Something what we called. might what we might do is i might uh ask you to share it with us and then we'll put it in the show notes at the bottom so that people can uh can have a little look uh, at, a, at a later stage. So that's not an issue at all. Um, so just to sort of uh, wrap up our, our discussion about direct bookings versus OTAs, did you have any other thoughts or input that you wanted to give on this topic? Operators really struggle with direct bookings. Now, I've, I've built my businesses on being direct. We work for OTAs, but we're always in a high 80% direct versus the OTA. In fact, this Last year, we're at 97% versus 3% in channel. So I've always built my business in direct. Now, I come from a background of doing extreme endurance events and climbing mountains and ultramarathons. Direct booking is the same as doing an, an ultramarathon, right? You're not in it for a 100-meter race. You're not in it for a 24-mile race. You're in it for an ultramarathon. It is a never-ending process, and it's a never-ending investment in digital footprint and creating your digital footprint and managing your digital relationships. It doesn't finish after five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. I've been doing it since the 1990s when I started building websites. So you've got to accept when you want digital direct business, you're in it for a very long time and the work doesn't get any easier. <laughs> you <laughs> constantly have to work on it. It's not something you do as a project and then forget about it. Obviously you can use agencies to help you, and agencies come with pros and cons, but <laughs> here you're I am committing <laughs> for the long term. And that's what a lot of operators don't really grasp. They think it's a project that they'll invest X amount of money, X amount of time, and it's not. It is a constant daily investment, not always of money, because once you've got a decent footprint, once you've got a decent digital uh, presence, it's more an investment of time rather than money. But to get that, you have to invest time and money. Now, therefore, it's a calculation, should I do it or should I not? Well, and in most cases, I'll come out on then, yes, you should, but only if you've got the ability to commit the time to it. Because the mar extra margins you're going to earn is more than going to pay for the work that you're putting in over the longer period. But you do really have to think in a multi-year environment and again come back to resilience of your business at some point you all sell your business someone who owns a business owns the customers owns a direct channel and sits down with a buyer and says okay 90 percent or 80 percent my business is coming direct there's the evidence and there's my digital footprint uh, versus somebody who's selling my business and 70 percent is coming through otas and 30 percent is coming direct i know who's getting the bigger sale price yeah and i think that this is a, a very important point so um a lot of our audience as well are, are property managers. So the guys that are looking after multiple Airbnbs or multiple service apartments, vacation rentals, and that sort of thing. And for them, uh, the transition into direct bookings has been very difficult because of understanding who their customer is and what their product is. But it's something definitely to take uh, of note of the importance of it, especially if you're trying to build a business for the long term. Short term, sure, rely on the OTAs in the long term. That's where you've got a lot of risk. If it goes wrong, if they switch you off of the OTA, if there's other environmental uh, impacts, if there's different legislation impacts, all sorts of things, you want to have these different channels figured out well. And then, as you said, the other opportunity is, is for all the upsells, the cross-sells, um, and creating a, a better experience for the customers that you just can't do on an OTA. There's just no way to do that, to provide that level of experience. And what's happening, as you as you mentioned before, now the OTAs are, are wising up to it and say, we're going to take a clip of all of that because you guys aren't doing it and they're getting better and better at it. Um, uh, so it's, it's a good space to watch. Look, um, was there anything else 
just in case, because I know you've got a lot in, in locked away in yeah, there. Just on coming back to the a lorry operators have started recently, the last few years. There is a tendency because you start recently to go fully digital, which is great. They learn the digital stuff and they go fully OTA because it gets your business kick started like rocket fuel. So you can go from having no business to having lots of bookings within a year. And then there's a Tizens, they think, I've got a business. That's why they don't do the direct mm. stuff, because they think, oh, this business stuff's easy. Why is everybody told me it hard? After two years, I'm getting hundreds of bookings a year. I'm getting thousands of bookings a year. It's all coming for the OTAs. Some of the older people, myself included, when we existed in business before OTAs existed, you had to do it the other way. You had to create your digital, your direct on the ground footprint and your direct on the ground network of chapping on doors and relating with other businesses. And then the web came along and you had to build your web footprint before it came on. The newer businesses tend to don't get past the speed of setting up with the OTAs. So the older businesses, it's to find that balance between the two of them. I often would love to get some of the newer guys and mix them with the older guys and say, right, your two heads together is the perfect solution because you're great mm -hmm. at doing this stuff, you're great at doing this stuff, but mm -hmm. the best business model is when you mix the two of them together and find, find the balance. This is great. I, I could talk to you all evening, but I am very conscious of the fact that it's late for you um, and I also need to crack on with my day. But look, thank you so much for imparting all this great knowledge. Um, I really enjoyed talking about OTAs versus direct bookings. I love, love, love talking about all the ancillary services. It's such a huge opportunity moving forward and completely underestimated. And there's so much to be learned as well. Like we haven't even scratched, we haven't got into the weeds of how to do it, yeah, uh, yeah. which I guess is, 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 is more episodes. And there's a lot of uh, resources out there that you can get. Look, I want to thank you personally for your time, um, for uh, spending it with us. I know that you're incredibly busy uh, and that it's late over there. So that's incredibly appreciated. Um, we'll put all the show notes at the bottom. So if anyone needs to get in touch or wants to get in touch, then please do. But um, as a thank you for your time, is there anything that we can do as a community for you? Hey, I'm on LinkedIn is my most D2B database. That's a whole different show, but I've been exceeding, exceedingly successful on LinkedIn over the years. Uh, so LinkedIn, if you want to stay in contact, connect with me, LinkedIn's the, the place to place. And yet again, another massively underused, utilized asset that business people in the travel industry don't seem to use, but it's there with millions and millions of customers just waiting to be used for free. <laughs> I can't stop you, can I? <laughs> now that I've got you going. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, have a great uh, rest of your evening, and um, I'm hoping that we'll talk again very soon. Okay, that's great, Bart. Thanks very much, and thanks to all your listeners. Thank you. Thank you. And please don't forget to subscribe. Give us a like. Share your comments uh, below, um, and uh, let us know how we're doing and if you've got any thoughts about the topics we covered today. Thanks once again.